All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Main the Outspoken. And tonight it is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. And it is Atlas Official Server Wipe Day. Tentatively, of course, it's always subject to change. They could delay it at the last minute. We're hoping that doesn't happen, but it could happen, of course. But as of right now, Server wipe is scheduled for tonight. Uh, I believe it's 10 p.m. Eastern time, which would be 7 p.m. Pacific. But yeah, server wipes going down tonight. They've just released the patch notes. So we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. We'll let the chat kind of start to filter in here. I just posted in a few places that I was going live to kind of talk about the wipe. We'll just give it a, a minute here or so before we start going over these patch notes. I personally am pretty excited. This is going to be Season 10 of Atlas. Now, initially, you know, when they first started doing this whole thing of the pre-release version of the game, they didn't call them Seasons initially. This the Basically, the community called them Seasons. But then the developers did seem to eventually kind of embrace the whole season aspect of the game. And now we're going into what's going to be season 10. Let me just say hello in the chat real quick there. All right. So, yeah, it's wipe day. Like I said, it's uh, September 21st, 2022. And I know a lot of people are really excited that it's the wipe. Of course, there are some people who aren't so excited. I know it's, it is frustrating sometimes when you've spent a lot of time, you know, building up your base and leveling up your character just to find out that they're going to wipe the whole thing. Um, but, you know, on the, on the flip side, though, these wipes always bring back a lot of players. Um, even the developers themselves said in their recent Q&A that... You know, they do see the biggest influx of players right after the wipe. And that initial, basically the rush to get an island, you know, to claim land and to level up your character and all of that, that seems to be the time that players enjoy the most. So, yeah. So it's happening tonight. Like I said, I believe it's 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Pacific, you know, pending any delay or anything like that. But as of right now, um, they did post oh, about an hour and a half ago that as of right now, it's still a go on schedule. So. so they did release the patch notes for tonight's wipe. And like I said, we'll kind of go over those here in just a minute. This picture that you're looking at right now is what the sea forts are going to look like. So if you're familiar with, like, I believe they called them like the control points originally, those little islands, you know, in, in the different regions that you could kind of claim. And then that would alter like the trade routes. And you could also put the spires on them, which could like impact your ships. Like, so it could increase damage, increase speed, durability. Uh, all those kinds of things. So these are what the control towers or the sea forts are going to look like now. They actually look like a base, which is pretty cool. So that's one of the big changes that's coming this season. And as people trickle in here, feel free to say hello in the chat if you'd like. Uh, this is kind of just a open discussion about Atlas and the wipe. Let us know what you think about it. Are you excited? Are you not excited about the wipe? Um, definitely let me know in the chat. But it's here either way. Season 10. You know, again, I, I hate to say it's for sure because you never know if it's going to be for sure. It could be delayed. Hey, what's up, Toxic Vixen? Welcome to the chat. Appreciate you stopping in. Are you excited for the wipe tonight? 
I'm definitely excited. Yep, white pipe. Absolutely. Yep, so it's coming tonight to the official servers. I, I don't know. I don't know if I caught it, but did they say if the unofficial servers are going to have to be wiped too? I think I thought I read that they might have to be if they want to add in the like the ship in a bottle system. But if they don't want to add that, then maybe they don't have to wipe. I don't know. Now, the ship in a bottle system is like a whole other thing that we can talk about. Um, but it's been delayed for the official PvP server, from what I understand. Like, it won't be implemented for the first probably, month of the season, they're saying, as of right now. But if you're somebody who plays on PvE, then it will be available to you. So the ship in a bottle system is something brand new. Um, I personally haven't tried it out yet, like on the PTR servers. Um, but it's basically a system where you can store one of your pre-made ships and then make some copies of it. So you basically can clone the ship, and I think you can do it like up to like four times, something like that. And again, you know, I, none of this information that I'm talking about is, you know, for sure. I'm just kind of speculating. Um, it's always subject to change because, of course, this game is in early access and all of that. But basically, it's a system that you can clone a ship. Um, I think it's up to four times. Um, and you can't have, you know, all four copies out in the world at the same time. I think you can only have, like, the original and one copy out in the world at any given time. So, but it's pretty neat. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that in the chat. Um, it, are you excited about the ship in a bottle? Or are you not excited? I've heard mixed reactions about it. You know, some people think it's a great idea because it will increase, you know, ship PvP if if people can basically readily just have a ship ready to go. Um, other people think it will get abused and will cause problems. I don't know. From what I have seen, though, the ship basically when you when you spawn it back into the world, it doesn't just pop out, you know, fully crewed and fully uh, filled with resources. It actually has to put it back into a shipyard like up on the scaffolding and everything as though it was a brand new ship, but it's at least fully built. Um, and I think it's still leveled as well, but that I, that I don't know for sure. I think if you actually level the ship and then you put it in a bottle, I think it will retain its levels. Um, it just doesn't retain, you know, all the crew, cannonballs, all that kind of stuff. I think it, I think when you spawn it back into the world, it's basically like it's a brand new ship. But either way, it's it's pretty neat, you know. It's, it's going to be make it a lot faster to get ships going, um, assuming that you can protect the original one that's in the bottle, because you can't clone the clone, from what I understand. You can only clone the original. Um, and again, if you're playing on the PvP server, that's apparently delayed for the first month. Um, but if you're on PvE, then that will be available to you. All right, so it looks like we're getting a few people joining the chat, so that's great. Welcome, everybody, those of you just tuning in. Wipe hype. It's server wipe night for Atlas. Season 10 about to begin in a matter of hours here. About four hours away, a little less. So again, this picture that we're looking at on the screen right now, this is what the sea forts are going to look like, the control point towers. They've actually got a, a pretty cool like perimeter wall all the way around um, with these new little like stone tower looking things on the corners. Those are pretty cool. And then the, the fort itself actually looks like a fort now. Uh, it looks like a little base, you know, with like ramps and stairwells and... I think I've seen that there's like parrots and stuff like hanging out so it just seems more populated now I think it would be really cool if eventually they would add in like the pirate towns into these things like that are in single player that would be kind of neat now they did say in the Q&A that supposedly we're getting like pirate ships into the game but I didn't notice that in the patch notes so I don't know if it's going to be right away Maybe it's just something they're going to add in later in the season, but I thought I had read that in the Q&A they had said that they were going to add in, like, NPC pirate ships, you know, so you would have something else to fight out on the seas other than just, like, the ships of the damned. But we'll have to wait and see on that. 
All right, so let's kind of start looking at these patch notes here. Uh, these were just released less than an hour ago, about 52 minutes ago, it says, from the time of this recording. It says we're getting ready for another season of Atlas. We're starting off with a new map, so we are going to get a whole new map this time around. That seems to be the theme lately with the different seasons. It does seem like they've been changing the map just about every season now. Uh, ship in a bottle, the beginnings of the sea fort construction, reconstruction, I should say, a whole collection of bug fixes, and several quality of life changes suggested by the community. A large focus of the season will be improving existing game features, so Pathfinders can look forward to several changes throughout the season, including the start of the modular ship design overhaul and a revamped trade system, factions, and much more. So those factions, I believe, is what they're talking about, you know, when they're going to add in the pirate ships and things like that. Um, I think you're going to be able to, like, choose... I don't know for sure on this, but I think you're going to be able to, like, choose a faction. And then if you take down ships of the opposing faction, maybe you'll earn some kind of reward or something like that. We'll have to see. Uh, so as this says, uh, servers will be going down to deploy the update tonight, Wednesday, September 21st around 7 p.m. Pacific time, and servers are expected to come back back up within a few hours. Now, somebody was saying to me earlier that they thought last season that the server came back up in like 20 minutes or something like that. I don't, I don't remember how quickly it came back up, but I know in other seasons it's taken a little while, so I would probably stick with this within a few hours time frame. Um, but then again, who knows? It could come back up in 10 minutes. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But either way, the current servers that are up are going to be down around 10 p.m. Eastern Time tonight, which is 7 p.m. Pacific. And that will be the end of Season 9. Let me know in the chat, how did your Season 9 go? Mine went pretty well. Um, I didn't get all the quests done this time around. I, you know, I did get all the Power Stones, and I was able to do... A few things. I, I didn't finish the Kraken this time. Um, I didn't get, like, the giant squid or the ghost ship. Um, now that I think about it, I really didn't get a lot of the quests done. I basically just got the Power Stones all done. And I, I defeated the Yeti. And, you know, like the, you know, I got, like, the, the digging up the quality 15 uh, shipwreck and the treasure and all that stuff but i i didn't get the kraken done this season and the ghost ship and all that stuff so i'm hoping maybe in season 10 i'll get that stuff done i think it was like season six i actually managed to get all the quests done like every single one that's the only time i've ever done it <laughs> it's not easy to get them all done yeah let me know in the chat how did your season nine go for you um are you looking forward to season 10 I can't believe it's season 10. I mean, when I first started playing Atlas, I think I started in season three. Um, it was whatever season started out for Xbox. I think it was season three. And I've been playing ever since. I've, I'm no longer on Xbox. I've switched over to PC now. But yeah, it's been a while. We've <laughs> been playing this game for at least a couple of years now. It's hard to believe we're now 10 seasons into this thing. All right, so again, welcome to all of you who are just joining us in the chat. Feel free to say hello if you'd like. We're just kind of hanging out talking about the wipe tonight. Wipe hype. All right, so we're going to continue on with these patch notes here. So again, servers are going down to deploy the update tonight. You know, of course, subject to change. Always follow that official Atlas Discord. Um, and if you need a link to that, I can put it in the chat if you're not a, already a member of the official Atlas Discord. But that's the best place to, you know, follow their news and updates. This is on playatlas.com that I'm looking at right now. Uh, if you want to read the patch notes yourself, too. Um, it's playatlas.com. So it says, lastly, as always, we're dedicated to bettering the gameplay experience with every patch. We apologize for any inconvenience and disappointment players experience due to the Kraken Bowl grid not being online when advertised. 
I actually did partake in the quote unquote Kraken Bowl on the official PvP server. We did that on Saturday. And yeah, we all arrived at Tortuga and we were like, okay, how do we get to the Kraken Bowl grid? Do we just sail through the red wall? <laughs> and sure enough, you could not sail through the red wall. There was no Kraken Bowl grid. So we just ended up uh, sailing back out through one of the portals and I. I can't remember which grid we ended up in. I think it was like L3 or something like that. And everybody just kind of battled it out there. And you can check out the video on my YouTube channel of the Kraken Bowl if you want. But there's a bunch of other videos on YouTube as well from other creators um, that are probably a little better than my video. I, I survived about 45 minutes. <laughs> I did okay. But yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Um, so they were basically apologizing for the fact that the Kraken Bowl grid wasn't available, even though they said it would be. Um, they said they're working to ensure that doesn't happen again in the future. And they appreciate all the support. And we continue to keep the community first as we move forward to final release. Happy sailing. So at least they're acknowledging, you know, that there was some problems. Um, these newer developers that Grapeshot seems to have, I, I do appreciate the fact that they are trying to engage with the community. Uh, like I said, they did a, a Q&A session last week. I'm not sure if many of you were able to listen to that, but that was pretty cool that Redbeard and um, I believe it was uh, Melons was there too, their community uh, manager there from Discord. But Redbeard, you know, one of the main developers, was in the chat talking and, and interacting with the community, so that was great to see. It helps just put people at ease a little bit, I think, when they at least acknowledge that there's some problems and that they're working to fix them and that they're actually listening to the community. I think that's a really good thing. A lot of people sometimes, I think, forget that this game is in early access, even though it's been out for <laughs> a while. Um... But it is still in early access, so I mean, it's everything's always subject to change. There's going to be bugs, there's going to be glitches, um, but they are working to fix it, for, so it seems. Now, I don't work for Grape Shot or anything like that. This is just my opinion. All right, so let's continue on with these patch notes. Again, feel free to chime in in the chat if you'd like to say hello or if you have any comments or opinions about the wipe tonight. All right, so this right here, as you can see, this is what the ship in a bottle table is gonna look like. So I guess this attaches right onto the shipyard. From what I understand, you actually have to put it on the shipyard itself. Um, and this is how you can literally bottle your ship in a bottle. So I don't know what happens after that. I don't know if you can actually take the bottle and stash it in your base somewhere or whatnot. I'm assuming so, but I'm not sure. If anybody knows in the chat, let me know. I personally didn't get a chance to play around on the PTR. I've just been busy with work and other things, so I I haven't had a chance to play the PTR. But let me know if you have and you are aware of how this works. But it seems as though you, you put this table on the shipyard and then, yeah, you can, of course, bottle the ship. And when you take the ship back out, I have seen that it does do this. It puts it back on the scaffolding you know, like it's a brand new ship again. It's just going to be fully built at least. It doesn't have all its crew or anything like that, though. But keep that in mind. And again, this whole system, this ship in a bottle, is delayed for PvP official. This will not be available tonight. It's going to be about a month into the server, supposedly. Alright, so yeah, the ship in a bottle says new magics have been uncovered while exploring the ghastly island in the Maw. Pathfinders who incorporate these magics can shrink their ships to store them in special bottles. Some Pathfinders have even reported that they can sometimes make a duplicate of their ships while they're in a bottle. And then it kind of goes on to tell you about how this works. Um, it says to use the ship in a bottle systems, players will craft a ship bottle station and ship bottles from the smithy. The ship bottle station must be placed on a shipyard and it will be used... Uh, you must place it on the shipyard it will be used at. When interacting with the bottles in the inventory of the ship bottle station, you press the right mouse button or right trigger if you're using a controller to access the options menu. These options are the bottle, the duplicate, or recover. You choose the bottle. It takes the ship that is currently anchored in a scaffold or in scaffolding in the shipyard and transfers it to the bottle. Oh, and you can take the bottle out of the station. 
Okay, so that's cool. So, and the cost of that is 50 solidified essence. Now, previously, I think you could only get that solidified essence in the Maw, but I'm not sure if that's still the case. You can then choose to duplicate it. Uh, if the required resources are present in the bottle station and you have an empty bottle, you may duplicate your ship. And that also costs 50 solidified essence and one empty ship bottle to do that. And then to recover it, you just choose the recover option and it restores the ship to the shipyard in the scaffolding. So again, it will not be fully crewed. It will not be fully stocked. It basically puts it back out as though it was a brand new ship. Again, I don't know if it's leveled though. That's one key question that I don't know. So if you were to sail that thing around and get it to level 60, whatever, and then bottle it, does it come back out level 60? I don't know. I assume so, but I'm not sure. All right, and so this shows you what it costs to make the ship bottle station. It's 60 gems, 270 gold, 96 metal, 110 stone, 134 thatch, and 240 wood. And to make the ship bottle itself, it requires 50 of that solidified essence. So, and like I said, in last season, I think you could only get that solidified essence in the Maw, but I'm not sure if that's different this season. All right, so we've got new names for the regions on the map this season, because the map is different. It says that the layout has been updated, the names of the regions have changed, Freeport locations have changed, and temperature fluctuations within the regions have been reduced. So I guess it won't fluctuate temperatures so often. All right, it says the following regions will be open at the season launch. Pharos, Mitroa, Caribia, Hakar, Comelos, Azula, these are really interesting names, <laughs> Galare, Galda, Tortuga, the Kraken's Lair, Cervantes Rest, and the Maw Waters. So they're doing away, I guess, with the old names, you know, like Central Waters, South America, all that kind of stuff. And they're actually, they've come up with their own unique names for each region, which is, I guess, kind of cool. It's not as though Atlas takes place on Earth, you know? We don't exactly have earthly things going on in the world of Atlas. <laughs> Giant krakens and cyclopses and dragons and everything else. It's okay if they want to make it more of a fantasy type of world. I'm okay with that. Now, the following regions will not be open at season launch. It says uh, Hawaii, trackless waters, and the unknown depths. Now, last season, they added trackless waters near the end of the season, and it was like an all lawless region. And the same with uncharted seas. Now, I don't know if unknown depths is the new name for uncharted seas, maybe? We'll have to wait and see, but those were like the true lawless regions last season, so I... I don't know if some of these other ones that they've listed here, maybe those are true lawless. I don't know. Those are my personal favorite regions to, to go to. Let me know in the chat if you like lawless. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of these are the claimable lawless, um, but I prefer the old school lawless, the ones that you don't have to claim anything. All right, so here's a good picture of the new sea fort. As you can see, it's pretty cool looking. It's basically a giant base. It's got like a nice perimeter all the way around it. I believe you can put like the defense tower cannons on those and all of that. Um, so it's basically like a mini island. Kind of neat. So it says sea fort reconstruction. The reconstruction of the sea forts throughout the Atlas has begun. Pathfinders will find that the islands have been fortified and new visuals have been added. The new sea forts are currently only found in Caribia, the largest of the regions in the Atlas. Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming this Caribia is probably the replacement for central waters. I could be wrong on that, but that's what I'm guessing. Um, it says additional sea forts will be added in upcoming patches. And it does say we can expect to see additional types of sea forts in the coming months as well. So that's pretty cool too. 
So not only are we going to get the sea forts that we're kind of used to or what these ones are, but we may actually see different ones coming too. So that's cool. Because they were pretty kind of bland and generic, right? I mean, they were basically just this like flat plot of land with a tower in the middle of it. <laughs> it was kind of boring and kind of lame. These look a lot cooler, you know, just my opinion, but this looks pretty neat. And I don't know if you have to, like, knock down one of these walls in order to get past it. Or if there's maybe... It looks like maybe over here in this area on the right, there might be, like, a gate to go through. But either way, I mean, those look a lot cooler. Just my opinion. All right, so carrying on here with the patch notes. So now we've got obviously a bunch of bug fixes that they're talking about. Um, they fixed an issue with the object text overlapping the repair tool tip pop-up menu. Fixed the issues with floating damage text not appearing for poison arrows. Um, they fixed flame arrows not displaying damage numbers when hitting a target. They fixed rivers flowing backwards. <laughs> I didn't know that was a problem, but apparently it was. Uh, they fixed issues with the workstation converting materials into the same type. Fixed issues with players being able to mesh buildings into a mountain. This one, next one's a huge one. Fixed an issue with the submarine crafting skill being missing. Now that was something that was huge at the end of season nine. Basically all the submarines in the whole game disappeared, <laughs> or at least on the official servers and people were not able to craft new ones. <laughs> so apparently they fixed that. Uh, they fixed issues with lanterns not being able to be lit, fixed issues with max out ground clutter density or distance causing players to crash. Now that's interesting. So I guess if an area had too many structures in it, um, it was obviously, it was causing people to crash. Uh, appears they've maybe fixed that. So that's good. Uh, let's see here. All right, so they fixed an issue where destroying an industrial wonder would prevent the owner from building another, so that's good. They fixed issues where the industrial lab and great temple buffs were conflicting with each other. Fixed an issue where the camera collision when inside a submarine was happening during third person view. Fixed where the death cache uh, was causing some non stackable items to stack. Okay, that's interesting. They fixed an issue with the North Pole and Antarctica regions on the overworld map not being accessible with a controller. So that's big for your you Xbox players or people who use a controller while on PC. I know that's been an issue for like a couple of seasons now where you're using a controller and you couldn't select certain beds, right? So apparently uh, North, of, North Pole and Antarctica were the big culprits. Um, but it's funny, they're saying North Pole and Antarctica regions on the overworld map were not accessible with a controller, yet they didn't list North Pole or Antarctica as regions that will be available. Hmm. <laughs> that seems a little interesting, right? But anyway, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, they fixed an issue where it does not display the pop-up descriptions for all regions on the overworld map when using a controller as well. So hopefully, basically, it sounds like they've fixed some things with the controllers. They fixed an issue where inconsistent text descriptions for the torpedo launcher Kraken railings was happening. They fixed with uh, random structures in the middle of the ocean. Now, I have seen that myself, actually. I saw um, one of those sulfur nodes just out in the middle of the ocean, randomly, <laughs> just sitting there. And you couldn't access it or anything, but it was there. Uh, they fixed an issue with spiders losing their stats when put in the tame hatchery. So if you're somebody who likes to breed spiders, um, they've apparently fixed that. And in, uh, going along with that, they fixed the issue where baby spiders were having worse stats than their parents. So if you were breeding spiders, the babies weren't coming out as good as the parents were. 
Uh, they fixed an issue where the player's head would change sizes when taking damage. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, they fixed minor art issues on the map. Fixed island coastline art issues that may be... You know, where sometimes you would see a big, like, hole in the ocean. <laughs> and it would just look like there was no water or anything there. Maybe they fixed that. And welcome to those of you who have joined us in the chat. Feel free to say hello. If, let us know if you're excited about the wipe tonight. Uh, let's see. They fixed an issue where artifact keys could be dropped and moved within the inventory after picking them up from the player's own corpse. Okay. Now that's going to be a big change all around this season is power stones. Um, supposedly, you're going to have to defeat all nine of the bosses now. And you also can only turn in keys that you actually get from that island. So you're not going to be able to, like, say, defeat the giant crab a bunch of times and then take the keys and go sail to the other power stone islands. You're not going to be able to do that. Hey, hard to flash. What's up? Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Wipe pipe. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of hanging out, talking about the wipe tonight. Going over these patch notes. But yeah, power stones are going to be more of a challenge this season, I think. All right, where was I here? Okay, so fixed a performance issue when attempting to place the great temple. Fixed an issue with the accessibility of the dragon head on the turtle ship, so apparently you might be able to actually use it. Oh, Hard to Flash says, I don't like the dragon changes. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that yet, but that's coming. Yeah, they've apparently made dragons better. <laughs> See, I thought they would do the opposite, to be totally honest. I figured they'd either take away the ability to tame drakes and cyclopses and all that stuff, or maybe nerf them, make them not as good, but they actually made the dragon better. They made it so it lasts longer and it has more stamina now. So, I think we're going to see a lot of drakes this season. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right, so let's moving on with the patch notes here. Uh, they fixed an issue where you could where you couldn't hide the map, I guess. It says, fix the issue with hide map text feature. Its default is now F12. Okay. Uh, they fix an issue with towers stacking on sea forts. Fix the issue where water jugs could only be filled once. Now, that was something that kind of popped up at the end of Season 9. And yeah, it was super annoying. Uh, because you could not refill your water jars. So if you were somebody that had a base like in desert, let's say, you probably had some water problems at the end of last season. Uh, they fixed an issue where the poison debuff was removed by swimming. Okay, so apparently it was it was acting like as though you were being burned and you could just jump in the water and take it away. But apparently they fixed that. The poison is a weird thing that they did add at the end of Season 9. Um, I guess when you shoot something with a poison arrow, it, like, it drops their food and water levels. So that's interesting. Um, let me know in the chat if you've actually ever used that yet. I, have, I personally haven't seen it, but who knows? Maybe it'll be something more in Season 10. Uh, they fixed an issue where the ocean didn't have the light blue water along the trade wind path. Fixed an issue where the altar of the dam building foundations could overlap each other. Fixed the issue where resources were refunded when uh, overriding a statue base and framework with a finished statue. Okay, so I guess you were getting resources back from it. Fixed an issue where the tame house and the hatchery were counting invalid tame types in the load nearby X tames command. Fixed an issue where dead tames could be loaded into the tame house. Okay. I don't know why you would want to do that, but... Hey, what's up, your crew? Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Kiwiness, thank you for the subscription. I really appreciate that too. Thanks so much. Let me know what you guys think. Are you guys excited for the wipe? Wipe hype. It's tonight. Of course, subject to change. I always have to put that disclaimer there. <laughs> We've definitely had seasons where like an hour or two before the wipe, they're like, ah, that we got to put this off another week. Let's definitely hope that does not happen. All right. So we're continuing on with the patch notes here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so they fixed it where dead tames could be loaded into the tame house. I don't know why you would want to do that, but... <laughs> yeah, we... 
Oh, you're not ready for a late night, uh, Kiwiness says. Oh, I know. That's the only bad thing about the wipe nights is it's always like crazy late at night, especially for me. I, I mean, I'm on the East Coast of the US, so I mean, the servers aren't even going to go down until 10 p.m. And then let's say it's down for an hour or so. That's 11 p.m. You know, so it's going to be almost practically like midnight by the time we get going. Have to brew some coffee or get an energy drink or something, right? <laughs> I took the day off from work tomorrow, so we'll have to see. As I was just praying like all day that they didn't delay the wipe because I was like, if I took a day off for nothing, I'm going to be upset. Yeah, crew, we out here. We're ready. All right, let's see here. Okay, so they fixed an issue where the stop the bar mini game did not appear when reloading a, a partially loaded Hydra revolver. Okay, uh, they fixed an issue where inconsistent textiles for the ship and railing for railing structures would appear. Uh, let's see. Okay, this next one is pretty big. They fixed an issue where players could bucket water onto a cooking structure without putting it out. Okay, now see, that has been a thing for a while people putting like a campfire on their ship and then of course when their ship starts leaking they would bucket the water into the campfire i don't think that was obviously intended <laughs> and i don't know if that fixes the the way of doing that but it says that it it says they were able to bucket the water onto a cooking structure without putting it out so i don't know if that means they can still light the fire, but yet bucket water onto it and then just have to relight the fire again. I, I have no idea. I haven't tested this out. Uh, Kiwiness is asking, did they patch out the forge a few seasons back? I think it was the Smithy. Yeah, I think when we first started one of the seasons uh, a few seasons ago, yeah, there was no Smithy. And then you also couldn't craft a bed, I remember. You had to use a like a loom or a tannery in order to, to craft a bed <laughs> the first night. It was crazy, I remember. I remember we were a smaller company and we were scrambling to try to claim an island that night and it was nuts because, yeah, you couldn't make a smithy. You couldn't craft a bed. Finally, we did figure it out and we were able to get it up and running. Uh, Kiwiness says, I thought peeps were using a forge for the bucket trick. Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. I've, I've seen a campfire. I've seen the campfire done, but it sounds like maybe that's been patched. We'll have to see. All right, where was I here? Okay. They fixed an issue where dinghies made in a tiny shipyard weren't being renamed after putting a name on the name your ship. Oh, so, okay, so you can name your dinghy now, guys. We're, we're good. Season is perfect now. <laughs> you can name your dinghy. Name it Galley and full send it. All right. They fixed an issue where clients in non-dedicated servers would crash when gridding. Okay, so if you're somebody who plays on unofficial, apparently the crashing issues are better. Um, they fixed an issue where the host in a non-dedicated session would crash when respawning at a bed while a client was connected. Oh, that's not good. So it sounds like we did get some fixes for unofficial servers. Now, I don't think that they've ever found a fix for the map issues that unofficial servers have. I think that's more related to the server hosts, but I'm not sure. I could be wrong on that. Okay, so they fixed an issue where a player could bleed tames that were protected in an armored dock. Wow, okay, so that's huge, because that has been a thing. I can't even begin to tell you how many of my tames were killed last season, because I had them sitting on top of a ship inside of an armored dock, and people would come along with one of those bleed swords and chop the tame a few times, and then it would just bleed to death. So apparently they have fixed that issue. Fixed an issue where players could bleed tames that are protected in an armored dock. Awesome. Now, granted, I'm kind of, I'm sort of on the fence about that whole thing because at the same time, players should not be able to just store all their tames on a boat in an armored dock forever and have them be not able to be attacked. I mean, that, it does kind of limit PvP in that sense, but... On the flip side, the fact that they can just use that new bleed sword to kind of bypass the whole armor dock system is kind of probably wasn't intended. So they seem to have fixed that. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, they fixed an issue with players being able to go prone as soon as they begin their reload animation. Okay, that's interesting. See, I don't even know how people come up with some of this stuff. Like, how do people even think of that? <laughs> fixed an issue with the artifact key decay timer resetting when a player dies and acquires both old and new artifact keys. Okay, so... I guess you won't be able to reset your artifact keys this time around. That's why I was saying earlier, I think Power Stones are going to be more challenging this season. I think it's going to be a lot harder this time around because not only do you have to defeat all the bosses and turn in your keys at the island you get them from, but you also it doesn't appear that there's any little ways to reset your keys. I mean, I don't know. People are clever. They always come up with something. But as of right now, they seem to have patched, you know, the current ways of doing it, I guess. Uh, they fixed in issues with floating structures in the middle of the sea. Like I said, I came across one of those sulfur nodes just kind of floating out in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> just sitting there. Uh, they fixed an issue where damaged armors would share their depleted durability with other armors of the same type when dropped. Okay. Um... They fixed an issue with overlapping text on the song stone when the verse book is dropped. Fixed an issue where tiger tames could bleed bosses for massive damage. Oh, okay. So apparently tigers were really good against the bosses, but I guess they're not as effective now. We'll have to see. And same thing. So that's... I, I can't pronounce this. I'm just going to call it the bleed sword. Um, but they fixed an issue where the bleed sword could bleed bosses for massive damage. So again, that bleed sword, I mean... And they used to have bleed rifles in the game too, but they did take those out. But the bleed sword, I mean, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad that it's in the game, but it has kind of been overpowered. What do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. What do you think about the kind of that new industrial equipment and the like the cursed equipment and stuff like that do you guys think that's a good thing that it's in the game do you not like it you know let me know in the chat and in the comments uh let's see they fixed an issue where lava did not hurt players okay so watch out for lava this season uh they fixed an issue uh let's see where the last arrow that would break a bow would not fire okay they fixed an issue where the description for the chicken egg incorrectly implies that they cannot be found in the wild. <laughs> okay. Some of these fixes are weird, you know. Um, they fixed an issue where players could bucket water onto a cooking structure without putting it out. They've already added that. That's in here like three times. <laughs> um, yeah, some of these are double. There's like multiple bullet points of the same point. Uh, they fixed an issue where tamed fire elementals were not rideable. So if you want to go tame a fire elemental, I guess you will be able to ride it now. And they fixed an issue where poison arrows were not damaging some creatures. All right. So those are the major bug fixes. Now they got a few miscellaneous ones here. Uh, server grids will no longer be added to favorites when joining... Aw, uh, they've removed hats from spiders, you guys. Man, I'm heartbroken. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you would put a hat or a helmet on a spider, it wouldn't actually put it on it. It would just kind of be like floating above his head. <laughs> so anyway, I guess they've made it so you can't put a, a, a hat on a spider anymore. Uh, the industrial shack decay timer has been increased from 10 days to 12. Wait. The industrial shack decay timer has increased from 10 days to 12 hours. Okay. So it used to be 12 hours, and I guess now it's 10 days. I don't even know what the industrial shack is. I never heard of that. Uh, bookshelves can now be placed inside of modular ships. Uh, when I first read that, I was a little confused because I had a Carrick last season that definitely had bookshelves in it. So I don't know, apparently maybe other modular ships weren't able to have a bookshelf, I guess. So that's fixed. Uh, they've adjusted the crocodile taming affinity effectiveness. It was a little difficult to tame crocodiles last season. I don't know if any of you ever tried it, uh, but it wasn't very easy. Like even if you had all your taming skills all the way up and you were using like the prime shark meat and, and all of that, it still took a little while. It wasn't 
It wasn't very easy, so I guess crocodiles will be a little easier to tame this season. Uh, they've updated the NPC portal art to enter Rookie Cove to remove the ring. Updated the NPC portal art to enter Rookie Cove to remove the ring. I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean you can enter Rookie Cove? From, like, outside? Because before, uh, Rookie Cove was only a one-way thing. Like, you could only leave. You couldn't come back in once you left. At least with a ship, anyway. You could spawn there. But you couldn't sail a ship back in. So I guess I don't know what that means. Let me know in the chat if you know what that means. It says, updated the NPC portal art to enter Rookie Cove to remove the ring. Interesting. Okay. Uh, they've increased the maximum an item can be sold for in player shops from 100,000 to 1 million. So if you've got something that's really good, you can now sell it for a million gold. <laughs> Probably good on unofficial servers anyway, because I know gold is, you know, a lot easier to come by on those servers. Uh, tame cargo ship railings can now be crafted in the smithy. So that's cool. Medicinal herbs can now be placed in the crew silo. I guess you couldn't do that before. Uh, the Pegasus ship no longer has the same icon as the Majestic Kraken. Players can no longer activate Circular Slice from a crouching and prone position. Now, apparently that was an issue in PvP that people were, I guess, figuring out a way to do their, like, Circular Slice while crouched and prone. And again, I don't know how people figure all this stuff out. I don't know how they do it, but... The really good PvP players always figure this crazy stuff out, and apparently you can no longer do that. <laughs> uh, they've updated terminology in the single-player options menu and warning messages. That's interesting. Uh, they've decreased how bright lanterns are. And that's kind of good. I mean, the way a lantern is standard in the game, it's like this really bright, like almost yellow color. It's almost like it blinds you, like you can't even see. So a lot of times what I would do is I would paint mine like a different shade, like almost like a silver or something like that, and it would, you know, make it a little easier to actually see. So I guess they've adjusted the lanterns a bit. Uh, fertilizer can now be stacked, so that's good. It used to take up one item slot, you know, per bag of fertilizer. Uh, Kiwiness says the bleed sword is after my time on Atlas. Yeah, it, that's something they've recently added in the last couple of seasons. They've been adding more, uh, they kind of call them like wonders and industrial wonders. And like they added some more stuff that was kind of related to the army of the damned. Like, so they added, um, these two types of resources. One's called cursed bone and one's called cursed wood. And it, when you get those, you can then craft what's called like the, like I think it's called the Army of the Damned Smithy. And it's actually like a different smithy that makes uh, different armor uh, that actually looks like the armor that kind of like the big, you know, Army of the Damned guys wear. It's called like Cursed Armor, I believe. Um, and then you can make those bleed swords. And then they also now have industrial resources too which makes things called like the industrial rifle which is like a stronger carbine and you can also make like large stone walls that are industrial and they kind of like glow in like this orangey kind of color and they're a lot stronger i believe than the the regular walls but you have to use uh, special resources to make them so they have been trying to you know add in new things into the game over the last few seasons um you know, some people, of course, get frustrated that they don't fix the current bugs before they add in new content. But at the same time, I, I give them credit for at least trying to, you know, add new stuff into the game. Uh, keep it fresh. All right, so let's continue on here. Um, players can no longer animation cancel the swords overhead slice. Now, that was another big one that people were complaining about. Um, I guess in PvP, I guess people were somehow able to cancel, like, the animation and then, like, somehow still keep fighting. I don't really know how that all works. I'm super basic when it comes to PvP. I'm lucky if I even survive a fight, let alone get a kill half the time. Um, I'm kind of a noob in that regard, I guess. 
but people figure out this stuff and I don't know how they do it, but they figure out these little glitches and whatevers, but at least the devs are, are fixing them. So can't cancel the overhead slice anymore. Now this is the big one. This is uh, the thing that Flash was talking about earlier in the chat. Um, they've increased the Drake duration from three hours to six hours. That's crazy. So they've doubled it. So if you go and you tame a, a Drake now, you don't only get it for three hours, you get it for six hours now. And that's kind of nuts because that's almost the entire duration of a combat phase. So I have a strong feeling that we're going to see a lot more Drakes this season. And they've in in relation to that, they also have increased the Drake's stamina from 1,000 to 1,500. So not only can the Drake you can keep it longer but you can fly it longer before it gets tired oh man Ugh. now i think a lot of players were kind of surprised by that when they read that because i think a lot of people thought that maybe they would decrease it if anything or take it away or something but man it looks like drakes are gonna be a lot better this season uh, they've removed the button to create a new character from the respawn menu. The create new character button was previously added to the server selection screen. So that's good. So at least hopefully people won't accidentally hit that uh, create new character button, you know. I've seen it happen. I've heard of it happen. I've had a buddy do it. They were mashing the button, you know, trying to get back in really quick after a respawn. And then they accidentally hit the create new character and then of course it does pop up a little message that says are you sure you want to do this and of course they're just mashing their button right because they want to get back in the game as quickly as possible and boom character's gone <laughs> so i guess they've fixed that so yeah they've they've removed the button to create a new character from the respawn menu and the create new character button is now on the server selection screen and that's also good too if your character gets like say stuck and, and you're like in some endless loop of crashing and you try to load into the game and your game just crashes over and over and over and you just cannot get back in. You know, this will hopefully fix that. Hey, what's up, TMG Gunthan? Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're just hanging out talking about the wipe tonight. Let me know. There's a decent number of you hanging out here chatting are you excited about the wipe tonight are you not excited are you disappointed i don't know are you not even gonna play atlas i don't know let me know <laughs> let me know in the chat but i think most of you are here because you're probably going to be playing some atlas in the near future or maybe you're just interested in the game i don't know uh, you want to know my take on on hard to flash well my take is that i'm hoping that we're going to have a good season this season and you know, I'm looking forward to sailing the seas with all you folks. So should be fun. Flash says they're excited. I'm definitely excited. Oh, hey, what's up, quality? Appreciate the follow as well. Great to see you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Said uh, said they're amazing, and you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, so there's only a couple more things here on the patch notes. Uh says the mortar ship's mortar damage has been reduced. Aw, oh, sad face. What? Oh, but here on the flip side, land mortar damage has been increased. Okay. So at least we're getting a little bit of balance there. And you know, it, it says the mortar ship's mortar damage has been reduced, but it doesn't say that the Harrier ship's mortar damage has been re reduced. So you gotta always like read carefully there, everybody. So it says the mortar ship's mortar damage has been reduced, but it doesn't say anything about the Harrier ship. Uh-huh, so maybe the Harrier ship might be better. Uh, Flash says, my repair guys definitely have to work twice as hard as normal repair people. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That happens. 
Uh, TMG says, what's the best things I found on the patch notes so far? Um, well, I mean, I'm glad to see that they're kind of doing away with some of the funny things that people do that really aren't intended, right? Like getting into a campfire. That's obviously not intended on a ship, but people obviously do it. I'm glad that they're supposedly fixing that. I'm really glad that they're fixing the ability for people to bleed tames that are inside of an armored dock. I'm glad that they're not going to be able to do that anymore. Um, you know, and as, as difficult as it's going to be to do power stones, I'm glad that they're fixing the ability for people to like reset the timer on the keys and stuff like that. Uh, Flash says the rumor is that land mortars will one-tap tames now. Well, I mean, in a way, they kind of almost should, right? I mean, <laughs> they're mortars. They're, it, it takes a lot of resources and stuff to even craft one mortar round. And the fact that they were pretty weak this past season, you know, I think it's going to be good that they're better. Hey, what's up, Collision18? Thanks for the follow. I really appreciate that. Yeah, so... I mean, overall, as far as my favorite thing I've seen in the patch notes, it's basically those things. It's the things that they're fixing that were never really intended to be there in the first place. You know? I mean, a lot of this stuff... Like the like the, the circular slice cancel and the overhead slice cancel for the swords and all that stuff. I mean, again, I don't know how these players even figure this stuff out. I mean, it's amazing to me the the workarounds that some players are able to figure out in this game, but they're clearly not intended, right? They're it was not intended to be that way. Call them exploits, call them whatever you want, but I mean it obviously wasn't intended. Now, I'm also one of the people that says, you know, if if the game lets you do it, well, that's kind of the game's fault. I mean, they should be patching it out like they're doing here. I, I, I do get frustrated when people are like, oh, they're cheating. They're cheating. Well, it's like, well, if, if the game is letting them do it, well, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, obviously, I don't condone cheating in the game. I don't want anyone to ever cheat in the game. But if the game is allowing it to happen, well, they need to fix it. They need to patch it. That's why the game is in early access, right? So it's good to see that they're fixing some of this stuff. Pirate Law, yeah, I wish I wish Pirate Law was going to be around. Maybe it'll be around in some form. I don't know. I was in Pirate Law. All right, so I think, oh, the last bullet point. Companies are limited to three of each type of shipyard and armored dock per grid. Yeah, that's the big one. Now you guys can chime in in the chat. Let me know what you think about that. This is gonna be huge. So shipyards first, right? That would be your tiny shipyard, you know, all the things you use to build a ship. You're only going to be allowed to have three of each type per company per grid. Now, last season, I've seen islands where literally all the way around their island, the whole perimeter was just covered in either tiny shipyards or basic shipyards, basically using them as a perimeter wall all the way around. Right? I know you've all probably seen it too. TMG says, I like that. It'll cut back on the lag and the stupid crap. Yeah, I mean, again, it was never intended for that. They did not intend for you to have 2,000 tiny shipyards making a perimeter around your island. Right? That was not the intention for those. And even the regular shipyards or the armored docks for that matter. I mean... The armored docks basically have become the meta for building a, a harbor. You know? And I agree that they need to come up with a system to stop all the structure spam on the islands. I agree. It's stupid. Like, 
why is that a thing? Why can I make 2,000 fence posts and cover my island in fence posts just to prevent people from building? Like, that's dumb. Like, if anything, just make the flag setting say, no one's allowed to build. Okay, well, there you go. Now you got to take the flag, you know? Because it basically serves the same purpose. I mean, people are going to do it whether you tell them not to or not. They're going to put down structures to prevent building if the game allows it again. Uh, TMG says, war, uh, war decks are useless also. Yeah, I mean, against certain teams, you know, uh, I played in Molon this past season and their island was very well defended. You know, everybody complained about it being a lag fest and a spam fest and whatever, but you know it, you couldn't get through it it took castle gaming fought us for like two months straight every day and then they you know they finally made it all the way through after more or less most of the company gave up at that point and stopped playing but you could just build and build and build and build and build and there was nothing stopping you you know i mean the game allowed tons of structures to be placed so there you go. People play structures. Now, I I wasn't one of the builders. <laughs> I didn't have the time to be doing all that. But, you know, there was players who were willing to build and they built. And the game allowed it. So it's like, well, if you don't want that many structures, then limit the structure count. I don't know. Now, on the downside of all of this, you know, limiting companies to three of each shipyard and three of each armored dock. You know, people are not going to be able to protect that many ships this season. You know, you're basically going to have three large armor docks and three small armor docks. So six. So you'll be able to protect six ships per grid per company. I don't know if that's going to be good. I don't know if that's going to be bad. I have no idea. I mean, it's going to be interesting. That's for sure. It's definitely going to be a change. Uh, TMG says the main thing that the devs want is more boat fighting and it doesn't really work as a survival base building game. Yeah, I, you know, Atlas, the big thing that draws me back to Atlas from playing games like, say, Ark, um, is the ships. The ships and the sailing and the shipbuilding and the battling of ships is what sets it apart from games like Ark. Because um, otherwise you're just, you know, like you said, you're base building, you're taming creatures. Um, you can do that in a lot of games, but Atlas is like the only one that has that true, you know, shipbuilding experience. Uh, Flash says the thing that I hate the most about War Decks is not being able to popcorn stuff. <laughs> yeah, that is that is annoying. Um, and that was one of the questions that people brought up in the Q and A. Um, They're like, "Are you going to do something about people being able to like popcorn stuff?" you know, out of their ships when their ships are sinking and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe that will expand someday. We'll have to see. But yeah, so next season starts tonight and you can only have three of each type of shipyard and armor docks. Now I've seen people in chats being like, well, people will just make an alt company. Well, and that might happen. I don't know. Maybe they've limited... The distance, so like even if you're, say, allied to another team, maybe they'll limit the distance that the docks can be placed next to each other to prevent just teams from making a bunch of alt companies and and doing that. Um, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And then the other thing about that whole thing is, you know, I, I'm assuming they're doing it because they're trying to limit lag then again people are just going to have to build harbors the traditional way of like you know using pillars and coming up off the ocean floor and making walls so to me that almost seems like that's going to be more structures but it also will require more work um, versus just placing a bunch of docks and shipyards so I guess making the players actually do the work versus just being able to take the easy road of, oh, I made 2,000 tiny shipyards, here we go. You know, I guess that's the give and take there. Uh, Flash saying, no, when you were war decked, you can't popcorn items out of boxes and stuff, so you have to manually pull them out. Yes, uh, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, so that is annoying. 
Even if you're the defending team, too. You know, if you're the defending team, you can't popcorn stuff. Which is annoying, because if you're trying to move, you know, like, say, a bunch of cannonballs or ammo or whatever quickly from one part of your base to another or whatever, you can't do that. Yeah. I agree. That is that is annoying. All right, so we've just got a few more bullet points here on the patch notes. For Xbox only, it says the memory usage has been optimized, memory leaks have been fixed, and the graphics have been optimized for each version of Xbox. So if you're an Xbox player, I, I did read that apparently they had to completely do the code again for like the Series S. So if you're somebody who plays Atlas on an Xbox, I'm hoping you'll have a better uh, better experience this season. Um, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's in this. It's usually in the patch notes every time that they've fixed memory leaks and they've made improvements for Xbox. Um, I used to play on Xbox when I first started playing Atlas in season three. I was back on the original Xbox One, and then I think it was like season four. I switched to the One X. And I was on that one for a while, and then finally I did get a Series X. And that one ran pretty good for a while, but then it was like Season 7 or 8 or something. It just kept crashing all the time, like every time you'd go through the grid line. And then, of course, the issue with the controller not being able to select beds. Like, that was super annoying. And I, I eventually gave up, and I broke down and bought a PC. So I'm on PC now, but, you know... My girl who plays Atlas with me, she's still on an, an Xbox Series X, so I'm, I'm really, and a lot of my friends are still playing on Xbox, so I do hope that they've fixed it and that it will be better this season. Fingers crossed, Xbox players. Hopefully it's going to be better. Um, and then there's just some known issues at the end here. It says the Xbox version of the respawn screen still shows the create new Pathfinder button. So if you're on Xbox, be careful. Do not hit the create new Pathfinder button by accident. Um, it says Seafort defensive towers are sometimes shooting at their own company. <laughs> okay, well, that's not good. Um, Seafort taxation banks can sometimes not be placed. Water spouts sometimes vanish rapidly after being dug up. And the loading screen images are not up to date. Well, if that's it, if those are the only major issues we see tonight, that's fine. <laughs> I don't care if it still says South America or Central Waters when I go through a grid, that's fine. That's not an issue. All right, and of course, they always add their little disclaimer at the end here. Again, they'd like to emphasize Atlas is still in early access, meaning they things can and will likely continue to drastically change, even in the middle of development. Anything discussed is only up to date as of the moment it's posted, and features and changes that are ultimately make it to the next patch, as well as timing, may be different from what was previously discussed. As always, they appreciate the suggestions and feedback from the community. Please keep them coming, and they thank you for all your support. And that's sincerely the Atlas crew. All right. So again, if you want to read these patch notes for yourself, you just head over to playatlas.com. And of course, if you haven't joined their official Discord, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, you know, that's where you can get the most up-to-date information and actually interact with some of the community managers and developers and things like that that are active in there once in a while so i highly recommend you join that discord if you haven't yet if you need the link to it let me know and i can post it in the chat but yeah let me know what you think everybody what are you, are you guys excited for the wipe tonight are you dreading it we're just a mere matter of hours away here, and I really, I just really hope it doesn't get delayed or anything. Um, we have seen that happen in the past, and I just, I really hope it doesn't happen. I really appreciate all of you who have been uh, following the channel tonight. That's really awesome. Thank you so much. I do plan to uh, do some more live streaming of Atlas this season. Um, so we'll try to get some more, you know, like ship battles on the live stream and things like that. I don't think I'm going to stream tonight, you know, when the wipe starts, just so I don't want to, like, give away 
too much information as far as where the team's trying to claim their island and stuff like that. Um, but once we get up and going and whatnot, like maybe tomorrow during the day, um, I'm sure we're going to be trying to do like power stones and map runs and all that stuff. Hey, Flagrant Floridian, thank you so much for the follow. Greatly appreciate that. Almost to 100 followers. Almost reached the goal. That's awesome. We're only five away now. So yeah, the ship in a bottle system, we talked about that a little earlier. That is that is delayed for the PvP server. We're not going to get that for the first month. But if you're on PvE, you will be able to experience the ship in a bottle system starting tonight. And then, of course, these. These new uh, sea forts. These are going to be available starting tonight. And I definitely think they look a lot cooler than they used to. Let, what do you guys think? Let me know. But they're definitely visually a lot cooler looking. And then just, you know, all the bug fixes that they've claimed that they're going to fix. Now, in the, the recent Q&A, they did say that um, potentially there's going to be pirate ships added into the game. So, like, NPC pirate ships. I think that's going to be really cool. That's something that I personally have been asking for for a really long time. Um, they did say too that they have, you know, upwards of like 10 more modular ships being developed. So those could potentially be coming our way, you know, throughout the season or maybe next season. I don't know. Um, but they did say they've got upwards of almost 10 more modular ships in the works. They won't be ready for this patch tonight, but, you know, definitely more on the way. Um, they did mention like in the Q and a that they're going to, you know, get more, uh, things like in the trenches, uh, things like that, and just continue to just make more improvements overall to the game. So yeah, let me know in the chat, give you, feel free to leave some comments, feel free to say hello if you haven't done so yet. Um, you know, I do really appreciate all of you taking the time to stop by and hang out here. Uh, we'll keep the stream up for a little bit longer here so people can kind of just can't hang out and leave some comments. Uh, I'm definitely excited. I'm always excited for a new season of Atlas. Like, <laughs> my friends are always like, how do you still play that game? I don't know. It's just like it's, this game brings me things that no other game does. It's got the social aspect to it. Um, it's got the, the trash talking and the salt. I love it. <laughs> um... You know, the customization of it is really awesome. Yeah, like Flash is saying, the game is one of a kind for sure. I mean, I've I've tried to play other games. I've tried to play Ark and Last Oasis and like all these, you know, Rust and all these other like survival kind of whatever games. And, and don't get me wrong, they're fun games. They are good. It's just that I always come back to Atlas. You know? Uh, no, they aren't. Not in the not in the current form you're speaking of, Collision. I think that might be coming down the road, though. I can't speak for them. I'm not. I'm not one of the leaders of that company. So. But yeah, no, it's it's. Let's see what's Flash saying here. It gives you a chance to make your own stories and adventures. I love it. I totally agree. And you know, I have made more friends playing atlas like you know gaming friends than i have with any other game for sure um it's the game that got me wanting to do these like videos and streaming and all of that um now granted atlas is kind of a hard game to do live streaming on because people will stream snipe you <laughs> you know especially if you're sailing or something like that if they happen to catch where your map is or if they figure out where you are they always come and get you Sometimes that's a good thing if you want that to happen, but you know, most of the time you don't want that to happen. But no, I've been playing Atlas since, like I said, it was season three. I think it was like fall of 2019 that I first started playing and I've been hooked ever since. So, you know, I, I love the game. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that it's still alive and kicking and that they're still improving it and still, you know, keeping it going for another season. I mean, we're going to be now starting season 10. Who would have thought? You know?
know? So. Yeah, so the wipe is less than three hours away here. It looks like we're about two and a half hours away. It's potentially supposed to be 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Pacific. Let me just like look at Discord really quick just to make sure we haven't gotten any more announcements. Nope, looks like the last announcement was just these patch notes. It was announced at 542 Eastern. So yeah, it looks like we're still a go as of right now. Two and a half hours away, so. Like I said, feel free if anybody wants to chime in with any more comments or questions or anything like that. I, I'm certainly not an expert. I don't work for the company or anything like that. But I mean, if you guys want to ask questions or, or put a comment into the chat, we can kind of talk about the wipe a little bit more here. Are you excited? I know a lot of people are saying they're excited. I have seen, you know, there's always those few people that are mad about the wipe. Why you got to wipe the game? I just built my base. You know, it's like, well, you know, the game would get kind of stale and boring, in my opinion, if they just never wiped. I mean, poor people on PVE are like stuck with the same island forever because they can't ever destroy any structures and stuff. I mean, it would get pretty boring, I would think, if you just could never wipe the server. I think the seasons... I think it would add a little bit more to the game if they announced how long the season was going to be. It would kind of add some more pressure. You know, like if they were like, okay, the season's 60 days. Go. <laughs> you know, it would add that little bit of pressure that, oh, I can't just hunker down for the next six months or whatever. Like, I got to get out there and do stuff. You know? I don't know if 60 days is probably too short, but I think if they maybe put a time frame on it with maybe some incentive to actually get out there and do stuff. Like I used to really, really like it when on the Play Atlas website, they would actually keep track of like who the top companies were and stuff like that. If they did that some more with some kind of like a little incentives like inside the game, like that would be really cool. Like if they could keep track of like how many sinks you have or whatever you know how much gold you've accumulated maybe i don't know something like that they actually had some stats they could track that would be kind of neat feel free to chime in in the chat if you have any other things you think that would be cool to see in the game but overall i mean it seems like they've fixed some stuff this season they've added some stuff um you know it's <laughs> This whole ship in a bottle system has created a lot of controversy. People don't really know what to think of it yet. Some people think it's going to get like exploited and abused and it will just cause all kinds of problems. Other people think it's going to be great that it's going to increase ship PVP and that more people will be out on the ocean and whatnot. We'll have to just wait and see. Time will tell. I really think these sea forts are awesome. Very cool. And then again, you know, for Xbox players, it sounds like they've rewritten the code for you guys. So if you play the game on Xbox, I really do hope that you'll have a better season this time around, that it won't be so laggy and you won't disconnect so much. Of course, I don't know. I, I, we don't know until it actually launches and we see what happens now what usually happens is like the first week it's not too bad on xbox because of course no one has really built up their islands yet but a couple of months into the season though you start sailing by some of those owned islands and it's like yeah nope <laughs> i'm not going there and even like the golden age islands i remember would cause like crashing and stuff like that on some of the servers But yeah, Atlas is definitely just a very unique game. And, you know, again, I'm glad that it's still alive and kicking and that we're getting new content and that's still still going. I mean, they're still shooting for like an actual release sometime in the future here. Uh, they I think they originally thought that it was going to be this year, but it looks more like it's going to be maybe like 2023. So we'll have to just see what happens. That's all we can do, right? All right, well, 
that's the patch notes, everybody. Season 10, still potentially happening tonight. September 21st, 2022. Uh, the servers are supposed to go down around 10 p.m. Eastern time, around 7 p.m. Pacific. You know, depending on your time zone or where you are in the world, you'll have to check your time. Um, but it's supposed to happen tonight, and it's tentatively still on schedule as of right now. Wipe hype! <laughs> Of course, like I said, follow their Discord, um, their official Atlas Discord. That seems to be the best place for the most up-to-date information. So if by some crazy chance they delay the wipe... What's up, Gonzo? Wipe hype, that's right. It's tonight. Yeah, I mean, I really hope they don't delay it. But, you know, if for some crazy reason they do, they would announce it there first. So... But it sounds like it's a go. Their community manager just posted these patch notes like two hours ago and said that they're on schedule. They usually don't go out of their way like that to say that. They usually will keep you in limbo up until the last minute. So the fact that they've actually gone out on a limb and said that it's on schedule and ready to go. I've got my fingers crossed. I don't know about you guys, but <laughs> I really do hope that it happens. Uh, let me know in the chat. What's your favorite thing that you're seeing from the patch notes? Uh, the biggest change that you're seeing? What's your favorite? Uh, what are you most excited for this season? What are you just most excited to do? Uh, you know, do you are you somebody who likes the land PvP? Do you like sailing? Do you like doing Power Stones? What is it that's your favorite thing to do in Atlas? Let me know in the chat. Um, I'm kind of one of those all-around people. I love taming. Um, I'm like the master crab tamer. Uh, my girl and I love going out, like trying to tame the different creatures and things like that. Uh, Flash says, I like role playing. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. Yep. It's always, <laughs> I always like going to the lawless and, and messing with the lawless bobs. That's always a lot of fun. <laughs> Building little prisons and stuff. <laughs> it's always a good time. But yeah, I, I'm the taming is what really kept me playing Atlas. And when I first started, I was like, "Wow, I can really actually like tame all of these animals that are just walking around and stuff. Like that's so cool." And of course, they've increased the tames over the years. You know, you can now tame spiders and crocodiles and all this stuff. I'm waiting for them to add in when you can tame like giant squids and sharks and whales and you know stuff like that. I think that would be cool. Even like cobras or. <laughs> I think it would be kind of neat if you could tame those. But yeah, I mean, the game is just so unique and just, you know, the social aspect is amazing. I love that. And I'll definitely continue to keep playing this game as long as it's available. I mean, it's I know some people would get bored of it because they think it's repetitive and, and things like that. But just the social part of it is enough for me because there's always new people that you're going to interact with, you know, new players, new encounters. Um, and hopefully they'll continue to balance the game and fix all these problems and glitches so that you don't feel like you're not in a fair fight. I mean, when it is kind of discouraging when players know about all these little glitches and things that they can do to gain an edge that really are not intended for the game so it's good that they're catching those and that they're listening to the community and actually trying to fix them because it is it's discouraging i mean when you you're trying to fight somebody and they're using some sort of tactic that isn't even intended for the game you know and they've just somehow managed to figure it out but it does seem like they're working on it, so. Well, all right, everybody. Well, those of you who have subscribed and followed the channel tonight, again, I thank you so much. It does help me out a lot, and it helps, you know, get things going here on the channel. So thank you so much, and I always enjoy chatting with all of you and interacting with my fellow gamers and Atlas players. So thank you again so much for following the channel and subscribing those of you who have i'll definitely be creating more atlas content this season i do play a few other games as well but i will be definitely making you know more atlas content for this new season 
I do play on the official PvP server, so potentially you'll see me out there on the seas. I go by the same name and game, just mainly outspoken. But all right, everybody, I think we're going to call it good there, unless anybody else wants to chime in in the chat with any more comments or whatnot. But I think we've gone over all the patch notes for tonight. Um, you know, again, you can go on playatlas.com. This kind of tells you all their uh, different things that they've gone over. This this right here actually is the Q&A that they did the other day as well. So you can read through this. And it talks about all the different questions that the community asked. So that's another thing you can kind of go read in the meantime that kind of gives you a, a blueprint of where they plan to go with the game. Like they've talked about a bunch of stuff in here. They talk about how they want to eventually put the game on Unreal Engine 5. Uh, they want to add more ships, change the islands. You know, there's all kinds of stuff in here that Redbeard talked about. So I do recommend you go read this um, if you haven't yet, because it kind of gives you a good blueprint of where they plan to go with the game. But yeah, wipe pipe, everybody. Woohoo! <laughs> We're going to call it good right there, but thanks so much for tuning in. This is Mainly Outspoken. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. And we'll see you out there on the seas of Atlas. Have a great night, everybody. And have a great wipe. <laughs> good luck to you. See you later.